Welcome to the Solid Gaming University channel. This video's topic is reusing the machine stock using an STL file. So in uh, inside SolidCam, when you're creating toolpaths, you're actually updating the machine stock. The stock definition reflects all the operations you've added to it. And that creates an STL file behind the scenes. If you're going from one SolidCam file to another, and you like to continue working on that same piece, that previously machined part, you can actually carry that STL file with you to the other SolidCam file. And the way you do that is you save it from whichever type of uh, simulation you're doing. Now here, I've just done a simple turning operation on this part. So it's giving us basically just a, uh, a dome on top of a disk, just from this turning operation. I'd like to take this machine stock to a milling toolpath, to a milling module file. Uh, and I want to carry the stock with me. So like I said, there are two places to, to save the stock. Here under updated stock, I can right click, save updated stock to STL, and that will save a STL file relative to the SolidWorks coordinate system, the one in the bottom left corner here. Now that's gonna be important later on, so let me just highlight exactly where that's sitting. The Y axis is basically the center axis of this part in the SolidWorks coordinate system. So that's one way to save the STL file. The other way is in the actual simulation. If I go into simulation, let's go solid verify, and to save this stock, I'll say File, Save Machine Stock to STL. And what that does is it saves an STL file as well, but this time it's tied in to the coordinate system we created under Mac 1, position 1. It's, it's this coordinate system right here with the Z axis as the rotary axis. Now, that, why that's important is because STL files always need to be tied into a coordinate system. So depending on which STL file you save, you'll want to know which one it's centered around or it's relative to which coordinate system. So let's see that in use. So I'm going to close this down. I'm going to open up a milling file where I've placed the target on top of a table. Okay. Now, I could set up a, uh, a milling operation under Mac 1 position 1. In this case, Mac 1 position 1 is the center of the table. And I want to reuse that stock from the previous file. So I'm just going to go in to the stock definition, change it from the box to the STL. Now, with STL, it's just asking me to find the file. So I'll browse, and I'll go to one of the two files that I created. Now, I did this previously outside of the video. And I named them turn stock from solid verify and turn stock from updated stock meaning from the two places I just mentioned, you can save the STL file. So let's use the one from Solid Verify. So I've assigned that as my stock. When I return to the previous screen, I can right click on the stock definition and show it on the model. And that's where it's ended up. So the Mac 1 position 1 of this file doesn't match where I wanted to, where it was on the previous file. In this case, the, uh, the, the stock definition was centered around the z-axis of Mach 1 position 1, and that's why it's placed it centered around the z-axis of this Mach 1 position 1. So if I wanted to reuse this stock, all I'd have to do is go into the stock definition. Let's edit Mach 1 position 1. And let's just set up this Mach 1 position 1 the same way that it was done in the previous file. In this case, it was the center axis of the target. So I'll just click on the green check mark there, click OK on that. And with Mac 1 position 1 centered around the part, if I just show the model once again, we can see that the stock is now placed exactly where it should have been. So what this means is that in the follow-up file, in this case the milling file that's following up on the turning file, Mac 1 position 1 needs to be in the same spot to place the STL. Now that wouldn't make sense if you don't want to set up your part exactly like you did on the other machines. So all it really means is that you need to make Mac 1 position 1 a, a dummy axis. Set it up how you, you had it in the previous file just to place the STL and then you can come in later with let's say Mac 2 position 1 which is where I wanted it to be the bottom corner of the target, and I can place my, my milling toolpaths under Mac 2. So simple enough. I want to reuse the STL stock, I can place it under a dummy coordinate system. 
Now we had created another STL using the updated stock method. So let me just browse to that one and see how that one works. So this one is not tied in to the Mac one position one axis. It's actually tied into the SOLIDWORKS coordinate system. If you remember, the STL was centered around the Y axis of the of the uh, of SOLIDWORKS. So once I show this model, we'll see that it's actually sitting like that, nowhere near where we want it to be, not even at the right angle. So saving it from the S, from the updated stock is only really useful if you haven't moved the parts. If you're still using the same original SOLIDWORKS part going from one machine to the other, in our case going from turning to the milling, then you don't even have to create any dummy coordinate systems, you don't have to do anything. The STL is going to be sitting in the exact spot you left it in the previous file. So depending on which type of operations you're going to do, which type of modules you're going to use, you might want to use one or the other. They have their benefits and they have their disadvantages. But essentially the one thing to remember is the STL file reflects the updated stock, the stock resultant from all your previous toolpath. And in this case, it, it updates it to the exact position that you left it in, in the case of the updated stock. In the solid verify, it still reflects all your previously done toolpath, but it saves it under Mac composition one. So it allows you to move it around depending on how you're doing it. In my case, this is a assembly file with a table and the part shifted away from its original location. So I would have used the solid verify to place it with the dummy Mac one position one axis. Any questions on this or anything else from Solid Game, you can always call us at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. You can send us your parts or your questions via the ticket system at solidcamsupport.com, or stay tuned for the rest of the videos in the YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.